Picture this. You have two positive trends in your data, then you aggregate them, and the result now shows a negative trend. How is this possible? This is Simpson's paradox, one of the most counterintuitive phenomena in statistics that can completely flip your understanding of data. Simpson's paradox occurs when groups of data tell one story, but the combined data tells the opposite story, and this happens more often than you think in real-world scenarios. Let's start with a concrete example from medicine. A pharmaceutical company tests a new drug against the standard treatment, and when they examine the overall results, they find some surprising numbers. 37 out of 100 patients recover with the new drug, giving a 37% success rate, while 9 out of 30 patients recovered with the standard treatment, giving a 30% success rate. And, by looking at these numbers, it appears the new drug is better since 37% is greater than 30%. But here's where things get interesting. When researchers separate patients by the severity of their condition, a completely different picture emerges. Among severe cases, only 1 out of 10 patients recovered with the new drug, that's 10%, while 4 out of 20 recovered with standard treatment, that's 20%. Among mild cases, 36 out of 90 patients recovered with the new drug, that's 40%, while 5 out of 10 recovered with standard treatment, that's 50%. In both severe and mild cases, the standard treatment actually performs better than the new drug. So, why is that? Well, this paradox arises because the new drug was tested predominantly on mild cases where both treatments do better, making the overall success rate misleading when comparing across different patient populations. Now, let's explore this with a continuous example using test scores of undergraduate students depicted here with blue and of some graduate students, depicted here with red. So, when we plot our data points on a graph, we can identify two distinct groups. On the bottom right, we have the undergraduate students, which may study more for this test, and score lower because it's a very difficult test, while the graduate students cluster on the upper left corner, and because they may already have knowledge in this domain, they study less and usually score higher. When we examine the relationship within each group separately, we discover something that makes perfect sense. Both undergraduates and graduate students show positive correlations between study time and performance within their respective groups. But here's where the paradox reveals itself. When we ignore these groups and look at all the data together, plotting a single trend line across all students, we see something completely unexpected. The overall trend line slopes downward, showing a clear negative correlation that suggests students who study more actually score worse on tests. This seems completely backwards and contradicts what we just observed within each individual group. So what's the key lesson here? Simpson's paradox teaches us that we must always consider group structure in our data and that aggregated data can mislead us by hiding the true relationships that exist within subgroups. This is why we need to question our data's hidden patterns and look beyond the surface. So, the next time you see a surprising statistical result, remember to ask what groups might be hiding beneath this aggregate data, because sometimes the most important insights are found not in what the data shows, but in how it's been grouped together. And that basically wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this explanation helpful, give it a thumbs up, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to stay up to date with everything I post here. Also, if you'd like to support what I do, consider becoming a member either here or on Patreon. Your support really goes a long way and helps me keep creating content like this. See you in the next one. Bye bye.